I really feel very privileged that I have an opportunity to speak to the Christian community, and you are so receptive. It's a marvelous feeling. I was 12 years old when the war broke out. I was born in Krakow, Poland. As far as I know, I only know that my family goes back to 17th century in the same house. All my ancestors were born in the same house that I was born. And we were liberal Jews, which had a lot of Christian friends. As a matter of fact, when I went to school, I was one of two Jewish children in the class. And yet, I was very highly regarded and very well accepted. Somehow, in this school, we did not have tremendous anti-Semitism. Uh, as a matter of fact, I always wound up to be the president of the class. <laughs> and uh, when the war broke out, I was only 12. And it was amazing that the, the, the principal of the school came right away to my parents, offering to have classes organized in the house, which was completely unheard of, because it was tremendously dangerous. Uh, my father refused, because that would have been dangerous for us children, to the families, and also to the teachers. It was not a very practical solution, but knowing that we have the support of the people, it was a marvelous experience. I went through the war as a Jew. We never went into hiding. I personally believe that if I'm a Jew, I'm not going to deny it. Even so, I was quite young at the time, and uh, it was not exactly the most practical thing to do, but that's how I felt. I then proceeded of getting incarcerated in several camps. The first one was Quash of Ghetto, the one that was depicted in Schindler's List. And then a factory bought us, an ammunition factory bought us, and we were transported first near Warsaw to a factory, which was a very deadly factory because of the contamination from chemicals that we were working with. And then they shipped us into Leipzig, Germany. The same owners, the same company. We were their slaves. They paid for us. And there is a book now called Death Comes in Yellow, where they say exactly how much they paid per person when they bought us. And I was liberated over there. And following that, returned right away to Krakow because I wanted to we wanted to find a family. My sister and my father perished in the war, but my mother was with me. And one of the reasons that she was with me, that at high holidays in 1943, there was a, the religious Jews wanted to pray, which was terribly forbidden. And despite all the warnings and all our begging that they abandoned it, they decided they're going to pray. Obviously enough, the Nazis came by the windows of the work, uh, workshop, and they saw the people praying. They came and they shot everybody who was praying. And as they were leaving, we had an order that we had to stay and work and never look aside and never say a word, just keep on working like there was nothing was happening with all the bodies laying around us. And as the one who was doing the shooting was leaving the room, he st stopped behind me. And I heard his voice, and I heard also a click, which I thought was just a little uh, cigarette case that was he was closing. It showed up that he pulled a gun, but after shooting all the people, the gun was empty. And so nobody reacted. He decided to leave it and, and go away. My mother was at the other end of the room, absolutely white like a chalk, but didn't say one word. If she would have intervened, I wouldn't be here today to talk to you. 
So we then decided to stay together and we managed to survive the war together, which was the most, the biggest gift I could have gotten. Following that, I was stuck behind the Iron Curtain and eventually wound up in the States. When Israel was the, uh, declared the country, they let us leave just for, for Israel. We couldn't, they took our passports away, everything. And I don't know, they didn't show it because I still have my prison dress, which I wore for, for a whole year. This one dress, summer or winter, oh, here it is. And I even embroidered the name or the number on it to make sure that nobody would say that uh, I look too sloppy. That to me was the, the symbol of, of orderliness. Then eventually I wound up in the States and I met Sister Ross, who was the most amazing Christian fighting anti-Semitism. She made 58 trips to Israel, leading Christian clergy and teaching them tolerance and teaching and, and fighting. Uh, the, according to her thesis, they also uh, eliminated uh, very derogatory remarks from the scriptures. And she has become a very close friend of mine. And there was, I'm wearing, I don't, you can't see it obviously, it's a cross intertwined with the Star of David. And she, this was made for her in Yad Vashem in reward for her work with Israel. And I decided, since my life was spared, I owed it to our society to really serve as an example of tolerance. After all, we have only one planet, and we have to learn to share the planet. We can't condemn somebody because they believe in a different way than we do. We have to learn that we all need to follow our own religion and our own beliefs and we have to share this planet because we will destroy the planet and will destroy the civilization and everything in it. So I am very thrilled that this cooperation of the two major religions is so fruitful and you serving as an example and a sign of hope to us who had suffered because they did not eliminate the Jews. They might have tried to downgrade us, they might have tried to kill us, but we are here and we are here with your help and your cooperation. And I applaud you for the work you're doing in keeping this world alive. Thank you so very much. Yeah, excellent, excellent.